My friend Alex Enders knows the best cards out of Core 2021 you should be on the lookout for. Stay tuned to learn what Alex has to say. Welcome to this Core 2021 collaboration with the Oathbreaker Thoughtcast. It is a five-part series, and in this episode, we'll be looking at the 10 best new cards for your white decks. I make Magic the Gathering and Oathbreaker content, and if that's what you're into, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And please check out Alex's page, the Oathbreaker Thoughtcast, link in the description. I will be paraphrasing Alex's article if you want to read the full article. Like I said, there will be a link. As you all know, another MTG preview season has come and gone. This top 10s are based on 1. How strong the card may affect Oathbreaker, and 2. How many different types of Oathbreaker decks we can expect to see the card played in. While I do try my best to be objective as I can, these are ultimately just my own opinions. With all that out of the way, let's kick things off with my top 10 white cards from Core 2021 for Oathbreaker. Number 10, Seasoned Hollow Blade. This aggressive two drop is somewhat reminiscent of Adanto Vanguard, but that isn't actually why I'm excited about this card. It's not every day that white gets a repeatable free discard outlet, let alone one that protects itself so well. If anything else, this 2-drop will make a fine addition to white aggro decks. Personally, I feel like this card sees play in decks that are running effects that care about the number of cards that you have been discarding in a turn, or decks that can make use of white or black cards to recur large dangerous creatures back to the battlefield. I think an Orzhov Sworn deck or an Exum deck uh, may be in the, my future when I look at Season Hollow Blade. Number nine, Bastry Solidarity. This sorcery isn't super flashy, but I think it could be a solid signature spell for Oathbreaker. Given a permanent 1-1 buff to a board full of creatures is a powerful effect. Whether it be dedicated 1-1 counters deck or white weenie strategies, with a 1-1 counter sub theme, cards like Azban Battle Priest and Azban Falconer can make this type of effect especially devastating and proliferators, like Grateful Apparition, can compound this bonus even further. It is a bit unfortunate that this card is a sorcery instead of an instant. I don't think this minor downside will stop Bastry's Solidarity from seeing play in Oathbreaker, whether it be in the 58 or as a signature spell. I absolutely agree with Alex on this, and the prime Oathbreaker for this spell are Elsbeth, Sun's Champion, basically any Ajani deck, and of course our new Bassery Cat. Number eight, Selfless Savior. Just, wow, so many emotions. Okay, this little one drop is pretty similar to Dauntless Bodyguard, trading away one power for a more flexible ability. Selfless Savior would make a fine addition to White Weenie strategies, as well as most any deck running a fair amount of creature recursion. This type of effect can easily be repeatedly capitalized on by Oathbreakers like Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord, assuming you could ever find it within your heart to sacrifice this good boy. I may also be a bit biased in regards to this card's placement in the list since 1. I love dogs, and 2. This art is adorable. Also, that flavor text is just heartbreaking. This card is only number 8 out of 10 on this list, but it is 10 out of 10 in my heart. I enjoy this card for any variation of Voltron deck, as well as any deck that has a key creature that needs to be protected as part of your winning game plan. Number 7, Speaker of the Heavens. This spicy one drop is a fun new toy for dedicated life gain strategies everywhere. Being able to make an extra 4-4 flyer every turn is a pretty powerful effect, even when restricted to sorcery speed. The fact that Speaker of Heavens also has Vigilance and Lifelink, the, there are two primary factors keeping this card this low on the list. Those are, one, the Speaker's ability is, for the most part, really only usable in dedicated life gain decks, and two, it's a tap ability, meaning that the speaker can't give any immediate value unless it's given haste. 
despite these downsides, I have no doubt that Speaker of Heavens is going to be a solid new staple for life gain strategies in Oathbreaker. Number six, Griffin Airy. Probably mispronounced that, I apologize. I have gone back and forth a lot on whether or not Griffin Airy and Speaker of the Heavens should be swapped on this list, but I've ultimately settled on putting Griffin Airy one spot higher. The activated ability on Speaker of Heavens is certainly more blatantly powerful, but I suspect that Griffin Airy's requirement is easier to meet in a wider variety of decks in the format. There's also the fact that Griffin Airy is an enchantment, making it much more difficult to remove from play. Griffin Airy can also be easily triggered the turn it comes down. It's a tad unfortunate that this enchantment doesn't trigger on each end step, but I'm sure this slight downside won't stop it from seeing its fair share of play in Oathbreaker. I for one expect to see this card in Sarah decks and Dovin Blue White Flyers decks, but only time will tell how people will choose to best abuse this card. Number 5. Angelic Ascension. This card is no generous gift, but Angelic Ascension is certainly still a solid new addition to White's options for Planeswalker removal. White doesn't get access to instant speed Planeswalker removal very often, let alone for the low cost of 2 mana. Giving an opponent a 4-4 is a very real downside to this card, but I've been in plenty of situations where I'd rather give my opponent a 4-4 Angel than let them keep their Oathbreaker on the table. Angelic Ascension can also target your own creatures and Planeswalkers, which likely won't be the most common use of the card, but it's still worth noting. I feel that Angelic Ascension has a Swiss Army-like use and can certainly be powerful as an instant. Alex had a lot more to say about this card, so do please check out the article. Number 4. Idol of Endurance. This spicy new artifact exemplifies a neat way for white gain functional card advantage even if it does come with its own limitations. Low to the ground, aggressive strategies can easily take advantage of this type of recursion, especially after getting hit by a board wipe and multiple removal spells. This artifact is limited to one activation per turn unless one has access to some type of untapping shenanigans, but I don't see this factor as much of a downside. Particularly, I enjoy how any remaining exiled cards get returned to the graveyard when the Idol of Endurance leaves the battlefield, meaning you're not permanently nuking your own graveyard when you play this artifact. White weenie lists will certainly enjoy trying out this new toy, but look forward to seeing all the different kinds of decks that it will manage to make use of. Personally, uh, Idol of Endurance did not make my top 10 list, so I can certainly understand Alex's point of view on this card. Number 3, Basri Ket. As an Oathbreaker, Basri Ket reminds me a little of the phrase, Jack of all trades, master of none. Basri's abilities could fit well into either a 1-1 counter or token strategy, as well as a more general white weenie deck. That being said, there are currently many strong Oathbreaker options for each of those strategies. It also doesn't help that Bassery doesn't actually do anything on his own, and he doesn't seem like a Planeswalker that would be particularly helpful when you're already behind on board. Even still, I think Bassery is a fairly versatile new option for White, whether it be as an Oathbreaker or in the 58. Having opened one in my own box of Core 2021 after the pre-release, you can expect to see a deck tech for this new Amenekit Planeswalker to grace my channel very soon. Number 2. Bassery's Lieutenant. Bassery's Lieutenant is most mana efficient mono white creature MTG has seen in recent memory. This 4-drop is functionally a 5-4 with Vigilance with protection from multicolored and it replaces itself when it dies. This card's last triggered ability becomes even more powerful when put into a dedicated 1-1 counter deck. 
and could easily slot into various white aggressive and mid-range strategy decks, as well as human and or knight tribalists. Since this card can replace itself upon death, it may even show up in a few aristocrats decks or other sacrifice strategies. I don't think Bassery's Lieutenant will become a new white staple for Oathbreaker, but I do expect to see it pop up in many different types of lists in the coming month. I think it's worth mentioning that this could be a great addition to recursion decks to capitalize on the trigger, like a bounce deck would take advantage of an enter the battlefield effect. So I'd like to see what people do with using his ability over and over in order to maybe build a token strategy. Number one, Megara the Diplomat. Now this is a white creature that may very well become an Oathbreaker staple. White has traditionally received very little in the way of card advantage, but Megara, this Diplomat breaks the pattern with two abilities that are especially relevant in Oathbreaker. Magara's first triggered ability makes him very strong against aggressive strategies, even more so when paired with his lifelink and four toughness. Even if you happen to end up playing this card against a table of non-aggressive decks, every deck needs to cast spells. Magar's ability also don't limit him to any particular archetypes. As long as you're playing white, you'll be able to get some use out of this card. That's not to say that Megara the Diplomat is going to suddenly appear in every White Oathbreaker list, but I do think this 4-drop legend will make a fine new addition to White's Oathbreaker staples. What are your favorite White cards from Core Set 2021? Are there any White cards you are particularly excited to try out in your Oathbreaker decks? Make sure you tell us in the comments or on Twitter. Stay tuned for our next episode, the Top 10 Blue Cards, from Core 2021 for Oathbreaker. Check out uh, a deck playlist here on the end card and YouTube will suggest a video for you. Hopefully it's the next video in the series. Thanks again and thank you for spending your time with me and the Oathbreaker Thoughtcast.